Hey guys, just had a spare uh, five minutes while I'm waiting for something to happen <laughs> on a Saturday. So just a quick video on this one. These are sort of remnant street trees in my neighborhood in Sylvania, but they're very common on the Hawkesbury sandstone. And look, these might've been planted, I'm not too sure, years ago, but they could well be remnant. Either way, they are a local tree and they're scattered through the little patches of remnant bushland here. And you will pick them up in, um, you will pick them up, no problems in um, New South Wales, coastal bushlands. Now, when you walk up to it, you'll totally think it's a stringy bark. And I'll totally forgive you for thinking it's a stringy bark. Have a look at that. And you know, you just start to go, well, I've got a stringy bark here, but we've got to inspect further. Just a general rule, the canopy is very generous. It's a very broad sort of generous canopy, just with leaves sort of long and, you know, maybe sort of 15 centimeters long and getting to about three, centimeters wide so where i start to differ it from a stringy bark is it's got a very generous canopy and then we look at what i've liberated and just one of the first things to notice if you remember the adult stringy bark leaves are concolorous they're pretty close to being concolorous or maybe slightly discolorous and look at these guys they're well and truly discolorous, sort of strongly discolorous for these guys. And what I've got is, I don't have a stringy bark, I've got a mahogany, which does have a very stringy bark-like um, bark. <laughs> I'll agree with that. But just have a look at that, how strongly discolorous the leaves are. And that's a typical feature of mahoganies. And also, I mean, I'll have to do this a number of times, but you're not really getting that typical stringy bark asymmetrical leaf base, that oblique leaf base. You know, you might just say, well, I don't know, Dan, some of the leaves look like they've got it, but if you just had, get a good representative sample, you're not, you're not really getting, I mean, that one there, yeah, okay, looks like a stringy bark. But just check as many as you can. And you should see that they're just not doing it really strongly like um, the stringy barks do, if you check enough leaves. So I do admit some of them are doing it. They're, they're totally doing it like a stringy bark. And it's accurate to show that. That's one I would say isn't really doing it, but check out that one there. That's That's totally looking like a stringy bark leaf. So this is an example of, you know, some species can throw that stringy bark looking leaf, but again, just check the discoloration. You're unlikely to get a stringy bark that does that sort of discolorous leaf. And then just keep adding more evidence in. Check out these buds. They're not really like a stringy bark at all. They've got this really long attenuate operculum which sort of um, differs strongly from any stringy bark. Um, longer, longer perculum there, which is probably longer than the hypantheum. I'm just trying to get it in focus here. Really long, nice and attenuate. Some people have said, you know, they're um, sort of got a long nipple on them or something like that. I, I just call them attenuate. Some people will call them rostrate. It's um, just when it's got a long attenuate tip on it. And the buds can be in seven to nine to 11. And that's, that's consistent with the stringy bark as well. But these guys are well spaced out and they're in seven to 11. And what I've got here is the red mahogany eucalyptus resinifera. It's uh, a nice, um, nice tree to identify. It does look like a stringy bark to start with, but it's, um, it is a mahogany, eucalyptus resinifera. 
And the last bit of evidence will just be a couple of fruits that I've got here. I don't have too many, but I've got some and I've just got to find them. I liberated them earlier. Just trying to get a really good example. This one will probably do. There's only one fruit here. Just look at how different that is to a stringy bark fruit. And what resinifera is known for is that strongly what we call hemispherical fruit. It's um, it's a bowl shape. It's um, you know, hemispherical meaning it's sort of half a planet. It's it's a hemisphere shape, like sort of cutting planet Earth in half. And the other thing about it is those strongly exerted valves. Those strongly exerted valves coming out of the fruit. I'm trying to find a, another example I had here. And I'm not doing this justice at the moment. I've got some old growth here that I liberated for last week's workshop. Uh, can I get that? Yeah, there we go. Look at those strongly exerted valves. And again, a bit different from a lot of stringy barks you're going to meet. And they won't be clustered. They'll be well and surely spaced out. Just mucking around with my phone here. Yeah, well and surely spaced out. You, won't, they got, you can see they got long pedicels. And there's just one fruit left here, I know, but there's just not too many available at the moment. But that's typical resinifera. Hemispherical fruit, exerted valves, the discolorous leaves, and then those long, those buds with that long um, operculum on top. Now, one final thing about resinifera is it's known for having this leaf venation, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do justice to this at all. I might just be able to. So it just means you've got a whole heap of veins going off at right angles to the mid vein and they're sort of parallel when they, those veins that go off at a broad angle to the mid vein are then put in these parallel sort of series. And that's what we call transverse venation. Now there's a group of eucalypts that uh, they've sort of got in a subgroup called transverse aria just because of this strongly transverse leaf venation. So again, it's just those broad angled secondary veins going off the mid vein and they're sort of in, you know, roughly parallel sort of uh, occurrences or, yeah, series as they go along the, the mid vein. That's what we mean by transverse aria. I really like that name. It's, a, it's sort of a subgenus name for in the eucalyptus and that's what we mean by transverse aria. So that's all you got for eucalyptus. Um, Resinifera, discolorous, nice buds. Don't forget those fruits. Nicely hemispherical. And, oh, I've lost it, but you've had a good look at it. And like I said, the um, it's a very stringy bark. It goes all the way to the top of the branches. But again, the mahogany, so just have a generous canopy. They've, they see, they've just got more of a dense, shady canopy compared to stringy barks, I find. And when you look at the overall tree, it's just a nice, broad, symmetrical tree in resinifera. It's just got a nice, broad, symmetrical sort of canopy. They're a nice, big, wide tree. Just again, you can get a stringy bark doing that, but it would have to be a big old stringy bark you know, something like Glabordia or Resinifera. Um, sorry, Glabordia or Eugeniotis. Yeah, something like Glabordia or Eugeniotis. But, you know, this is a nice, wide, laterally spreading tree. I sort of associate that with Resinifera as well. So there you go, that should be enough for you, hopefully. They're beautiful trees, the red mahogany.